Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com Okay, so today we're going to talk about physics, science, and spirituality. One thing I want to point out, uh, it was a realization I had years ago, is humans were divided a long time ago. Everything was divided. Now, if you if you go to... Okay, I'm going to pull a couple verses out of the Bible. So, it says, In Isaiah, the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and fatling together, and little and a little child shall lead them. Isaiah 65, 25, The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw, the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. Okay, one more. So we have Job 5, 23. This is the New Inter International Version. For you will have a covenant with the stones of the field and the wild animals will be at peace with you. So, okay, it's like we are divided on every level. So we are divided within, between our left brain and the right spiritual brain. That was never meant to be. That's That was the trick of the serpent in the garden. To sh when, the, when the serpent lied to us and said, oh, you're naked. He didn't exactly lie. But then he said, what he said after that was, uh, that that's shameful, that that's wrong, etc., which caused Adam and Eve to hide from God. Well, what does that mean? How do they hide from God? They hid behind their logic. Now, how I learned this was working with men in dating or relationship coaching, okay? Whether it was divorced man, married man, single guy. One thing I noticed was men, they hide behind their logic from their emotions. Now, men are born using the left brain. It's the male brain. It's, we, we, we do it and we don't even realize we're doing it. Just like a woman is born using her right brain and that's her home. So eventually though, women have to go to school and they have to learn to develop their left brain. So women tend to be more balanced in society. So the techniques, the internal awareness techniques, like Jesus says, look within, um, they they teach you how to open up and become more emotionally grounded, thus opening you up to your right brain. Now, universally, for over 30 years working with women, it's really fast. Like, it's, it's surprisingly fast. It took me months to really learn how to ground myself and open up, etc., etc. And a lot of my male clients will have the same experience. Like during the course, they're very resistant. They, when they do open up, they'll, they'll be like, most of them will be, like, oh! they'll do kind of, oh! and boom, they close back down because that is a new experience. And they're so used to being in control that letting go and opening that door is, to them, it's very scary. So I began to really realize like, Oh, this is like, I, it, it, it took me many, 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 many years working with men. And I got really frustrated. I'm like, like, what is the deal? Like, why do men like just lock that door and stay in the left brain? And I realized it's because they're afraid of dealing with their emotions, that emotional pain. Whereas women are born essentially dealing with emotional pain and sharing tips with each other and like well when I get hurt when when Timmy's mean to me at school what I do and they share notes with each other and they begin to develop well this is how you deal with emotional situations and issues whereas men the way they deal with it because I was a teenage boy I remember what it was like when I was around 12 13 14 years old I go like, oh, screw that I'll just go into my logical brain I'll be Mr. Tough Guy I'll close up and I won't I won't feel the pain and that's how men learn how to deal with emotional pain. Meaning, they don't. They just close that door and hide behind logic. So now, when you go back to the book of Genesis and you see where the serpent tricked them and said, oh, you're naked and said, and um, I can, I'm, actually, I'm going to go back and read that. I don't want to misquote it. Okay, so it's Genesis 3, verse 7. Now, before this, Genesis 2, I think it was the very last verse, verse 25, it says they were, they were 
naked and they were not ashamed. Now, this was when they were in the garden with God. So, and I remember going, well, why did they say that? It's because it was important to understand there was a shift. So before they walked around open, meaning naked, and they were fine with it. God was fine with it. Everyone was fine with it. So after they eat of the fruit in Genesis 3, 7, it says then, uh, let me go to the King James Version. Where is it? And the eyes of them both were open and they knew this is knowledge, the tree of knowledge, left brain, which is about rules, right or wrong, either or mentality. So it says, and they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, meaning they were hiding this nakedness. Now this nakedness is being open emotionally to your right brain. Now, Genesis 3, 8, it says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the, what? From the presence. Now, what is presence? Presence is when you open up your awareness, which means opening up to your right brain, when you're in, which brings you into the present moment. Because the right brain processes through the five senses. See, hear, feel, smell, and taste. Which means you're in the present moment. So it says, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Now, why did they do this? Because they were ashamed. It says, but the Lord God called to the man. Well, let me go to the King James Version. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. They hid behind their logic from their emotions. Okay, in the next verse, let's see, Genesis 3.11, in the King James Version, it says, And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee not thou shouldest not eat? So, so that's kind of hard King James language there. So it's really, sim it's really simple here. The tree of knowledge is limited knowledge. It gets you stuck. It's in the box thinking. It's memorization. It's about rules, structure, and organization. So this is why God is like, well, who? Oh, oh, yeah, let me read the next verse. Hold on. I'm sorry. It is the same verse. God says, who told you that you were naked? Meaning they didn't know what naked was. They didn't know that they were naked before. There was no such thing. The serpent, narcissist, made up a word and then put a bunch of rules behind it and said, that's bad, that's wrong, you should feel ashamed, which is what narcissists do to all of us. So the secret of all secrets is shame closes the door to God. Shame closes the door, the door to spirit and truth. Shame closes the door to manifesting with God, to prayer, to, to supping, to being with God like Adam and Eve used to be in the Garden of Eden. Your right brain is and or the Garden of Eden. It's either is the Garden of Eden or it's the access, the open door to the Garden of Eden. The number one thing, the number one, number one, number one thing that should be preached, taught, and healed in churches throughout the world is healing shame. That is what all of this is about. All the way back in the beginning of the book of Genesis. That's why the forbidden fruit, the serpent, the garden of Eden, this is why all of this is so important. If you heal your shame, I mean truly heal it on an emotional, energetic level, you'll begin to open up more and more and more and more. And that's what narcissists did to you. They shamed you. They tricked you. They manipulated you. They started adding rules and making up rules and saying, no, that doesn't mean that. This means that, which is total bullshit. But what they did was you, when you walked away, you felt like you were disconnected from God. You felt like you were in darkness because the left brain is the black or white brain. It's darkness. The right brain is full of lights and colors and sounds and flavors and emotions and feelings and music and delicious food. It is a colorful, bright world, which is the five senses. See, hear, feel, smell, and taste. The left brain is the logical brain. The right brain is the creative brain, the creative, emotional, spiritual brain. It's in the present moment when you're in that brain. So number one, the more you heal your emotions, the more you heal your shame, the more you access this Garden of Eden, this Garden of Creative Power.
Number two. So a lot of people will ask me like, well, how, how do you do that? Like, okay, there's something I can do at, at will. I could be in the worst mood in the, in the world. It does not matter. I can walk into a busy, loud restaurant with 300 plus people and boom, quiet it down. I don't have to stand up. I don't have to look at people. I could literally be sitting in a booth around the corner with the wall where no one even knows I'm there. Nobody knows I exist. I can expand my energy throughout the entire room and boom, you can hear a pin drop and you'll see people looking around like, why did it get quiet all of a sudden? I have a video with Adam talking about this because I did it with Adam. Let me, let me see if I can find that clip. Job 5.23 New, New International Version for you will have a covenant with the stones of the field, and the wild animals will be at peace with you. Because it feels good. So, yeah. Yeah. the first time I really had this solid experience of this is when I went to Buddha Calm. Oh God, this was 20, 24, 25 years ago. And it just, it's like love just emanated from me. And everywhere I went, I, I could walk into a restaurant and they'd be, ah, they would be really quiet and everyone would just, just look at me and smile yeah. peacefully. Yeah, right? I've seen that. So when I visited you in yeah. San Francisco, what was that, four or five years ago when I first yeah. came to meet you? I thought it was three years ago, but yeah, maybe it's been longer. Yeah, so three, yeah. Okay, okay let's, let's go for four. We'll go for a middle. All right. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, I thought he was mad. Uh, guys, I, I, I thought he was mad. <laughs> I mean, because I told you about this first, but you didn't believe it. Is that what you mean? He told me. Yeah. He, he said, listen to the noise in the restaurant. We were in, uh, mm. what was that restaurant we were in? It was uh, like some kind of burger. B BJ's. Yeah. It's a big restaurant, BJ's. BJ's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went in there. It was loud. Everyone's screaming. Yeah. At one point, like, people are shouting, and there's kids screaming in the back. And you're like, oh my god, it's really loud. And Mike says to me, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quiet the, the room down. And I'm like, oh shit, what's he talking about? What does he mean he's gonna quiet the room down? And then he's just looking, like, I don't know if he's looking at me, through me, or he's kind of like just seeing. Let's put it that way. And then suddenly, like, you feel this shift, this energy shift in the room. And I, this sounds mad. Like you literally wouldn't believe this sounds unless nice, you were, because it doesn't logically sound like it sounds impossible. The the room, you, it's like uh, a dimmer switch, or no, it's like an audio control for a hi-fi. It's gradually going down, 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 down until it's like just you could hear. Silent. You could literally hear a pin drop. If someone dropped a spoon or yeah. a pin. You could hear, and this was a big restaurant with well over 200 people or more. It was a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. So I tell yeah. people this, but I'm like, yeah, they don't believe me. But then when I take them to a restaurant, they're like, how did you do that? Like, so all I, well, I can't tell you how I do it, but it's like you said, it's like the energy in the room. It's not just the the verbal volume, but it's the movement because people, and I don't know if I think it was you were there one time with me where it got so silent, people started looking around like. What's the thing that? is that the <laughs> thing is so so you know sometimes we don't want to believe what we see because it's not the norm. Mm -hmm. So what happens is like Mike did this one time, and I was like, okay, that's just a coincidence, right? Mm. And it's happened once, but <laughs> Mike knew that it would happen, so he 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 literally did that. I mean, I was there for two weeks. He literally would do that daily, frequently, to the point where I'm like, okay, this is not funny anymore. This yeah. isn't, I can't logically, through experience, unless I just lied and said it never happened, I yeah. can't truly say that didn't just happen. So at what what it I will do, multiple times. <laughs> what, I, what I did with Adam, I remember I know I did this more than once, is I <laughs> dropped the volume to the whole room. And I'm dead silent, and I could tell he thought it was a coincidence, even though this was like the second or third time we did it. So then I go, "Oh, would you like me to raise it back up?" And he went, "I've been talking." And I go, "Would you like me to lower it back down?" 
and he was just like, dude, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Multiple times, to the point where I was like, okay, this is, this is, okay, this, you, you have to be, but again, like, just listening to this story, if you're coming from a logical place and saying that that's impossible, you'll never believe, you, you just have to see it yeah. to believe it kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely an energetic thing and the only way I could parallel it to is I read a book called The Art of Happiness that's written with Dalai Lama and Howard C. Cutler, a mm -hmm. uh, psychotherapist and it's similar to the story that when the Dalai Lama walked into a hotel these barmaids just energetically liked him and they never did this before, but they all, uh, eventually, after a few days of him being there, they used to line up to see him at the same time in the morning to greet him and smile. And prior to him being there, they were all just, like, going in their own direction, busy and hustling and rustling and just, you know, getting to business, no one connecting. And then by about three to five days of him being there, apparently, like, they would all gather together and they'd be all calm and quiet. So it has to be something energetic that we don't logically understand it, it's in that same category you know right. so yeah well yeah the shift that you made recently is a step towards being able to do that so you're on the path you are so you're yeah, not that far I've away noticed, from me yeah go ahead yeah i've noticed like look at his smile he's smiling big time i think we're a lot more powerful <laughs> let, me, let me show that smile <laughs> Say it, say it, oh, okay. Go ahead. Powerful than we believe to be, because I think when we realize that we're energetically powerful in ourselves and with our others, but you know, it's, see, I've got to be careful of my words, especially like on social media or YouTube, because it's not, not like you're, you're not manipulating anyone. What you're doing is you're going to a self-loving state or energy that you're doing on yourself first so that people can appreciate. It's not like I want you to do X, Y, or Z. It's I am being peace or love or joy or contentment. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm helping you share and include this if you wish to. And usually people do. That's what it is. It's not. So we, we've been divided on all levels. So when you get your left hemisphere in sync with your right hemisphere, and they're literally physically, neurologically on the same wavelength, then you become at peace with the world. Then animals will literally, as Adam said, he goes, it's like they'll walk up to you. Little children will walk up to you. They'll lean on you. They'll hug you because it makes them feel grounded it calms them down and brings clarity into their system okay i just realized i actually cut that part off i didn't i'm going to actually grab that clip where adam talks about how people animals children will like just come up to you and lean up against you etc um the other thing is that i noticed like I mean, I had some squirrels climb up my back. I, yeah. I live in London, so I, I live by St. James Park, and they kind of look at me, and I can literally get a squirrel. This is no joke. I, I've had people see this. Yeah. Uh, my ex-girlfriend saw this. Um, her friend seen this. I'll literally look at a squirrel and give it permission to, he'll look at me, he or she, I don't know what gender they are. I'm not a squirrel professional. <laughs> and uh, he or she will look at my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at my foot, which is kind of like, do I have permission to go up you? And, and and I'll look at it with friendly eyes, and then he or she will just climb up me. Literally, yeah. climb up my leg, up here on my shoulder, and then leave after a while. So, yeah. So, um, he's sharing what happens when, after uh, people take my course, and whether it's emotional healing or, or any of my courses, because I include this in all the courses, is internal awareness and letting go. And what it does, it opens you up to your right brain, which is the five senses brain. That is the same system that animals are in all the time. So when you are in that system, animals feel comfortable with you. 
they literally will come to you, they, right? Like I, I have a video oh, where I've got a recorded yeah. video where a deer can't, comes up to me and lets me pet it. All right, and a lot of people yeah, are so full of shit. I'm like, well, go look on my YouTube channel, man. So go ahead. Yeah, so, so yeah, the, on this subject, what I found really interesting is um, nice people, like happy people, squirrels, uh, <laughs> babies, kids, yeah, yeah. dogs. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, energetically, they, they, they're just drawn to you. Yeah. And so I found that, like, I've always, I don't know why, but I've always had, I haven't been particularly comfortable around like babies or kids. Like, I'll accept them and I'll be okay with time with them. But on the first instinct of meeting them, I've never been like 100% like comfortable. And it's the first time with doing this emotional releasing that I literally, I, I couldn't believe it. This, this baby girl comes up to me, starts waving at me like this and just smiling. And I'm just like smiling back. And I was like, and her mom was all smiley. And then there's just all these smiley people around me. And I'm like, what is going on? And it's funny because I used to crave attention so much that I would push. And I was not looking for attention. I was just relaxing on a bed. It's funny, I always seem to be relaxing on a park bench or a a club bench and I get this really good energy coming towards me. Um, There was another girl, (laughs) I was in a train and um, this family comes to sit next to me and um, oh yeah, that's it. This little girl sits down next to me. She literally put her head on my shoulder. I never met her and gave me a hug. And oh, I was really? like, Mike, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, but he called me. I was like, a little girl just gave me a hug. I was like, what the hell? I never had that happen in my this life. This was about two like, days after that session I keep talking about? Or three days, something like that? Yeah. yeah but yeah. this is like, this, this is not a girl I know. This is not family or friends of family. Like, this is not someone I've ever met in my life. This is some mm-hmm. random girl in a train gave me a hug. <laughs> and I looked at the dad and we kind of like laughed and smiled at each other. And it was like, wow, that was, that was crazy. Like, I've never seen that happen. So here's part three. We are energetic beings like atoms and electrons on all levels, all the way down to the finite looking under a microscope, all the way up to the entire universe from the sun, the planets, the moon, everything. It's pure space. You can learn how to do anything and everything that I've done. And even more. A lot of people ask me, like, well, how do you do that? Well, I've been giving you secrets and tips and understandings throughout this series of videos, especially in the last couple of months. And I'm going to give you probably the most powerful understanding through science that opened the door for me. See, the framework has already been built. It's already been designed. It's already been put into place. You don't have to do that. Now I'm about to explain to you what the framework is in a very 3D scientific way. So God created this experience for us, life, the three dimensional experience, the alpha, the omega, the beginning of time and the end of time, the alpha and the omega and three dimensions. And then he created that spark of negativity into all this positivity and that created contrast. Now we have the five senses, color, sounds, flavors, feelings, emotions, all of this, even your thoughts are created through contrast. The idea is to begin to flow that contrast where it is good. It's kind of like delicious food versus food that doesn't taste so good. All of it has contrast. It's just learning how to be an artist. So before the framework, I want to say this. It is literally like walking and stepping into a car 
shutting the door, putting on your seatbelt, putting the key in the ignition and turning that ignition. The car will start. See, you don't have to learn about electricity, how to build a car's frame, how to install bearings, how to install the electrical system, how to build and, and develop wires and wiring and how to build a battery. You don't have to know any of that. All you have to do is turn the ignition and press on the gas pedal. That's it. All I'm doing is teaching you how to reconnect with your own power that is already there. And in both plus and more. Yes, yes, yes. That is one of the keys to turning on your power. No, not, can't, won't, shan't. That's how you shut it off. It's really obvious. See, you think it's hard. It's not hard. It's simple. It was always made to be simple. Hell, my high school girlfriend, when she turned 16 years old, she learned how to turn the ignition key in a car. She learned how to drive a car. Accessing your creative power is actually very, very easy. You were just tricked and lied to, manipulated into believing, oh, it's really hard. No, it's not hard. You're already a spiritual being. It, it, it's already there. You're already inside the framework. You don't even have to get into the car. You are the car. It's... It's exactly like art class. You just get the paint, you sit down at the table, you get your canvas or your piece of paper and you start to create. There is no right or wrong. All there is is heart and soul. In fact, that's how you open up is by opening up to your heart. This is why narcissists try to block you and get you stuck behind your logical brain. They don't want you to open up because then you're going to access all your creative power. And it is power. It's good power. It's the power that comes from your heart. By opening up to your heart, this is how you access it. So you have to be in a state of love. So here's the third, the third thing I wanted to teach. So number three. Everything is parallel on levels. For example, they divide you between yourself, which means now you're divided between animals, you're divided between other people, etc., etc. When you become at one with yourself, your left and right brain and your body connect as one functioning unit. That's the, the triangle, the triune, the, the three, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, the left brain, the lower brain, and the right brain. The right brain is the Holy Ghost. It's the spiritual creative brain. It's the emotional creative spiritual brain. The lower brain is like the teenager brain. It's that little kid, the little boy. It's kind of mischievous. Then the left brain is the adult male brain, which follows rules and keeps things in order. There's a function for all of them to function together. And love opens up that door to turning all of your systems on. So now let's get to part three or number three. So, a long time ago, I learned about atoms and electrons and all that stuff, okay? And Pastor Rex brought this up when I was probably about 20 years old in church or 21 or something like that. I don't remember how old I was. And he was talking about these new discoveries that were making scientists lose their minds, etc. Well, here's what you need to understand about science. So, first of all, everything, everything, including your, your body, your muscles, your fingernails, your hair... It, oxygen, water, space, the moon, the earth, everything is 99.999. I don't, I don't remember exact number, but 99.7% empty space. It's nothingness. This is the void. And when you access this, now you can create. And here's what's going on. When you try really hard, you're focusing. Now, when you take energy from a light bulb, so you can take a light bulb that can, maybe people can see you from about, I don't know, half a mile away, a mile away or something. But you could take that same light bulb, that same light, the same energy, and concentrate it, and it'll send a laser beam all the way to the moon. So when you begin to concentrate your energies, you're actually blocking out this greater power. We want you to relax and literally lighten up. Because now the energy begins to flow. 
So a while back, they started to learn some things. So I remember hearing this from Pastor Rex, and I heard it in uh, science class in college and high school as well, is they knew about electrons uh, probably around, I don't know if it was the 40s, 50s, or 60s, but they couldn't see them because they didn't have a powerful enough magnifying uh, microscope or whatever, right? But the reason why they knew they existed is because they left a trail behind, kind of like a little car going really, really fast, leaving a little bit of smoke behind. So it left like a trace. We'll call it a trace. I think that's the official term. So they knew that atoms and electrons, etc., existed, but they couldn't see it. But then I think it was around 1970 where they developed a powerful enough uh, microscope to where they could actually see it. Here's my point. Atoms and electrons are so small. There is nothing but pure, pure space to 99.997% or something like that. Again, I don't remember the exact number, but it's nothing but space. And that's what you are made up of. Everything is made up of this pure space. We should be able to walk through walls because they're nothing but space. Now you're thinking, oh, Mike, you're going a little far. No, I'm not. Even scientists, physicists, this is one of their greatest questions. Like, how come we can't walk through walls? Why is it I'm sitting in my chair and I'm not falling through the chair? Physicists have been asking this question for decades, if not more, possibly up to 100 years at this point. They don't understand what's holding everything together. So lo and behold, within the last decade, there was a scientist that came along. Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, did, a, did a world scientific thing where all these scientists came together and he discussed this. And I believe that scientist was there. It's a video on YouTube that you can find. What he found was... So you want to look at my notes real quick. Don't want to forget this. So there's something called string theory. There, in the in the theory is something is holding all these atoms and electrons, etc., together to form ch chairs and and tables and solid things, so we don't just fall through. But they didn't know what it was. It was a hypothesis. It was a theory. String theory. So very recently, this scientist made a really, really powerful discovery. So he went down this real deep, deep path, went down the rabbit hole, and he began to find these things called adinkras. Adinkras are symbols. And these symbols began to create a code, a repeat, a, sorry, a repeating code. And guess what code that is? It's the very code and system that you're using right now to listen to me. This is the same computer code that's allowing you to access this video through the internet right now. It's zeros and ones, zeros and ones, zeros and ones. It's also the same computer code that Neo woke up to and could see. What you have to understand is everything is pure space. Now, watch this parallel. So when you look under a microscope, what do you see? You see atoms and electrons with absolute pure space, but then turn around and look through a telescope and what do you see? You see stars and moons and earths and planets with absolute space, 99.997% space. If you talk to a scientist or physicist, they'll say, yeah, space literally is nothing but pure space space now you might be what are you talking about the earth is huge the moon is huge but if you look at it on that scale but the space look the space between the earth and the moon is something like 293,000 miles and then the next planet is millions of miles away and the sun is even further do, do you understand that in our whole entire solar system, what do we have, nine planets or I forget how many planets. I mean, it's nothing but space. And it's the same as you go throughout space. This is a parallel with everything. Now, when you take these two pieces, including the adinkras and string theory and how everything's being held together, this is the framework for you to create anything and everything that you want. See, if you look at chapter one, chapter two, 
before you go into chapter three, before the narcissist serpent demon screwed things up, and that's really what this is all about. This this negative being screwed everything up. That was never meant to be. Before that, we were in the Garden of Eden playing and creating and painting when we wanted and manifesting what we wanted. And that's all it was. It was just a really wonderful experience. And everybody did whatever it is that they wanted to do. You want to paint today? Well, go ahead and paint. You want to build a truck? Well, go build a truck. You want to design a new infrastructure to build a bridge from here to there? Well, go ahead and do it. It was not only was it about creativity, but it was about what's the word I'm looking for about searching about. There's another word about discovery. And that's what makes the, the that is what is the juice of life, the creativity, the fun of life is this sense of discovery. You already are a creator. It's already inside you. You've already done it. You've been doing it. So look at everything in your life. Right now, stop. Where are you? Are you homeless? Do you have a pair of old jeans on? Greasy jeans? Are you in a home? Are you in an apartment? Do you have an old computer? Do you have a new computer? You created all of that through your thoughts. The good and the bad. Even accessing this video right now, you created that. The sooner you begin to realize that you created everything in your life is the moment you take back your power. And now you can begin to create consciously and purposefully the things that you actually want. Just imagine that for a second. What would it be like to create a wealthy, prosperous life? What would it be like to create two new good friends that are actually good people with good hearts, clear minds that give clarity in communication, people that are loving, kind, and supportive? You know that training that I do, the internal awareness training? This is what connects you to this creative power. That's why Jesus said, look within. Hey, this is Mike Colleen at MikeColeen.com. If you like this video, please click subscribe, click the like button, go ahead and make a comment. And if you want, you can go ahead and make a donation. There is a PayPal link right there in the description box beneath this video. God bless you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.